Hey folks, this is Josh Slosberg with Josh's Worst Nightmare Oddcast, back from the grave. I'm going to be chiming in on this podcast, mostly when I have things to say about new fiction, or who knows, maybe I'll resurrect it. I'm not sure, but right now I'm going to do a podcast to announce the release of Where the Shadows Are Shown, available on September 30th from godless.com that's the ebook you can go to amazon for the paperback and ebook and read my post about why i'm doing that or you can get it directly from me a signed copy go to josh's worst nightmare.com or send an email to josh at josh's worst nightmare.com and i'll send it to you and that'll be that so what i'm going to do in this podcast is i'm going to answer the age-old question that is often foisted upon authors, which is, where do you get your ideas? So I'm going to tell you story by story, spoiler free, where I got my ideas, where the shadows are shown. This is most of the stories I've written between 2017 and 2022. A few of them I'm saving for a forthcoming eco-horror collection. And yeah, so let's just get right into it and no more to be said. I start with an introduction where the shadows are shown, where I talk about my reasoning behind this. I don't really need to talk about that, but basically what it, does it mean to be a shadow shower, one who shows the shadows? That is what I claim to be. The next story is not even a story. It's Darkness Neath the Pines. It is a, a song lyric. I wrote this many years ago, and I don't usually love the stuff I wrote a long time ago, but for some reason, this still stands up. I did some very minor edits, but basically it's about a guy walking through the forest at night, and I used to do that. That was based on my travels to college. I lived either in this dorm that was off campus or this older house that was in this meadow. And it was about a mile to a mile and a half walk to the college. Sometimes I'd ski and sometimes I'd come back through the forest. So I would go through the forest. It was a walk through the woods in the mountains to class. It was pretty idyllic and sometimes it was dark and I would see things by the side and sometimes I would test having a light on or not. And that's what that's all about. Creepy old dude. This is based on, well, it's a story about a guy who walks around his neighborhood or all my stories about guys walking around, maybe, and comes across this dude, an older dude with a little poodle who is appearing in the same spot every morning and just was just kind of eerie. And so then the uh, character deals with that situation. So this guy a stalker, what's going on? It is based on a true story of walking around the mountain suburb of Evergreen outside of Denver. And there's this old kind of odd guy with a little dog. And yes, at the top of his driveway, three days in a row, I saw him exactly the same spot. And it was just pretty strange. And then I wrote this story and I found him less annoying afterwards because I would run into him and I don't know, something about him just creeped me out a little bit. Who knows? Maybe I'm the creep. Next one, the lemon tree. This is biological horror. This is about a guy who is very fond of this tree that is supposed to bear fruit, but does not. This is not based on a true story, but it is based on my ideas of what it would be like to become really close pals to a tree. Let's leave it at that. Happy campers. There is a person who is camping and there are some good old boys nearby with very loud radio and there is a confrontation. So this is one of my, what a fellow Denver Horror Collective member Tom Mavrudis called my curb your enthusiasm story. So basically a character getting annoyed by a little thing and then blowing it out of proportion. 
I write these mostly to make fun of myself. Yeah, these people annoyed me. No, I did not actually confront them. I actually sat there at the campsite and I wrote this whole story out. And that is where that comes from. Long Strange Rip or Long Strange R.I.P. Rest in Peace. This is a story about the Grateful Dead. And the title came from actually a childhood friend of mine who actually now lives in my area, Jason Ackerman, tip of the pen to Jason. He gave me this title because I sent him the story. We were both Grateful Dead fans. He actually turned me on to the Grateful Dead when I was a teenager. And I sent this story to him with a different title. And he suggested that title. He's not a fiction writer, but it's a great Great title. So I asked him if I could use it and he said, yes. So it's about Jerry Garcia, the guitarist, the late guitarist from the Grateful Dead going to hell to bring back their keyboard players because for folks who know the Grateful Dead, four of their keyboard players died untimely early deaths. And I wanted to just play on that, a loving homage to the Grateful Dead while also making a little fun of things. Levi Cures the Plague. I wanted to write a novel about an evil wizard warlock. Now, not a Harry Potter, nice palatable thing, but Robert E. Howard Conan, a bad dude, um, a murderous magic guy who is not necessarily super redeemable. I wanted to actually tie a little bit of Jewish horror into it. And so I experimented with a short story in that world. And I have, I like how the short story came out. It's basically folk horror. I haven't decided if I'm going to write a novel about it, but that was the inspiration behind that. And basically, yes, a bad dude, an irredeemably bad dude, but how did he turn bad? That's kind of the question. I don't really get into that here. It's just a short story, but uh, let me know what you think. Drain. Drain is the first short story I ever had published in the horror realm. And it is about a woman who finds bed bugs in her apartment and starts coming up with all sorts of theories as to what they might really be. So is this biological horror? Is it supernatural horror? Like a lot of my stories, that's up to you to decide. This is based on when I first moved to Colorado in 2014, I stayed at a mountain motel and I did find a bed bug. <laughs> and I left shortly thereafter. I searched through all my stuff to make sure it wasn't in there. And uh, yeah, so it's funny because I don't have a problem with insects, spiders, millipedes. I can live here. I, I don't care about insects. I don't like ticks that spread disease, but I, ticks that don't spread disease, I've had them. I don't care. Uh, but Something about bed bugs, I think it's just that they're hard to get away and that they just live in your house. I don't know. We, we tend to not like them and there's been a resurgence. And I thought, let me write a story about that, but tie it into a more traditional horror trope. So tell me what you think. Doing Without. This is a story about a person in a diary journal entries form. So it's kind of experimental. And this person is cutting things out of their life for dietary purposes. So first carbs and sugar, they're losing weight. Then they start realizing, oh, this is a crutch in my life. This is something I don't need. And you can maybe guess where the story goes. That's based on the fact that I'm a bit of a minimalist. I do tend to cut things out over time. All right, I'm going to eat less of this food, gradually diminish the intake I, I like things simpler. I find nothing more difficult in life than just its complexity. And I'm I'm still not simple enough. And I would like to, <laughs> maybe it's a, a dream of mine to do what the character does in doing without. The Connecticut Witch Panic. I wanted to write a witch story, but not your typical witch story. And I did some research of lesser known witch stuff. And I found something called the Hartford Witch Panic. Now, I'm originally from New England area. We're all familiar with Salem. But Hartford Witch Panic, which was a situation in which several witches were killed. And most of them were men, which was 
different as well because typically in the US a lot of the witch hunting was of women now in Europe it was basically a third men but i i wanted to touch upon that and it's about the descendant of somebody who was killed during the witch trials or whatever happened the hartford witch panic and obviously this person had a child before they were killed and this is the descendant and this person is seeking justice or maybe vengeance and i kind of go into that I, and that's my angle hot on the trail this is probably the darkest story i ever wrote and it is about a an individual who is stalking another person and is planning to do something very bad and instead they pull back at the last second and then try to do something less bad but they've kind of already sealed their fate it's too late they already had the bad ideas they've already moved things forward you can't you can't wash your hands clean completely and it's basically just some of my studies of psychology the masculine feminine or yin yang shadow jungian shadow the darkest elements the hidden elements and that's i wanted to explore what i thought was the darkest of the masculine and the feminine so that's where i get into that wakey wakey for gauge this is my only fan fiction that I've written. And it is from the perspective of Gage, who is the Stephen King character in Pet Cemetery, the little kid. And I thought it would be funny to include some of the cast of characters. And it's a loving homage and a poke at Stephen King. No one would publish this. No one would take this story, I think because they're chicken and they're afraid of Stephen King. But I actually think that if Stephen King ever read this, and he probably won't, he would actually get a kick out of it because Stephen King was the first horror author, or at least one of the first that I was introduced to, maybe the, the first adult horror author. My mom introduced me to Stephen King at a too early age. <laughs> and this is basically my my payback, let's just say. The Hand You're Dealt I originally self-published this story because no one wanted to touch it. And it was called Hand Gina. <laughs> so it's not as terrible as it sounds. It's a biological horror story about a, a man who gives short shrift to a lot of the burdens of what it's like to be a woman. And then he finds out symbolically, anatomically, what it might be like and I uh, I think that this story is both gross and I think has a message, but here's where it came about. It came about in a writing workshop and we were supposed to write the grossest thing that we could to gross out other people in the group. And I wrote about a hand just with an anus asshole in the middle of it just because i thought that would be gross a hand is visible to everyone an asshole's not there you go nothing very deep and people seem to like it i'm like all right that has an interesting effect but what am i going to expand upon this where am i going with this and i thought well what if i made it another part of the anatomy that's not just gross out but has another meaning behind it and so that's where that came from do i actually have a vagina in my right hand I'll never tell. Viremia. If you look up the word, this will explain the story, which I don't actually explain in the story, but all you need is a dictionary. No one ever does look it up, so it'll be a mystery to you all till the end. It's kind of a noir story about somebody who had committed a crime and you find out why she committed this crime because then she does a flashback and she goes into her trekking through this desert, the Utah desert, where I've spent a fair amount of time. And it's some of the most beautiful and terrifying, desolate, remote landscapes. And she comes across some creatures there. And I had an idea for a biological horror story about a kind of creature. And 
perhaps it will become clear once you read it. It was funny. This was actually the second story I had published and I, it got a lot of rejections first. And one of the rejections I still remember the editor said, yeah, it just feels like you're retelling somebody's hike through the desert. I was like, exactly. Yes. Thank you. Like that was the greatest compliment I could ever get. That's exactly what I tried to do. I captured that feeling of the beauty and horror of these landscapes. Six ways to beat your landlord. This is about a character that is having problems with their landlord, as I say in it, taking the Lord part of their title too seriously. And this is the opposite of my experience. I've never had any landlords who have been anything but courteous and fair and just. None of them have ever withheld deposits for damages that were there when I moved in. None of them have ever violated terms of lease to walk in without any 24 hour notice. None of them have ever made false statements about construction that may or may not be going on in the neighborhood and then happened three days after I moved in. So yeah, this story is just a complete fabrication. It's, it's the inverse of, of my experience, okay? For all future prospective landlords. All right, this next one, the cat's meow. This was maybe the third story I had published. And this is pure biological horror as well. I wrote an article for the Boulder Weekly about the phenomenon in the story. I think I wrote the story first and then wrote the article. I can't remember, but both are based on science. I've worked as a science writer. I've won awards for that. I'm not a scientist. I am a writer who can understand science, but frankly, I, I have to dumb things down to understand them. And I think that makes me better at communicating them. So I looked into a particular, I don't want to give much away, an organism that there have been a lot of studies on their effect on humans. And the whole story is based on the science. I basically crammed the story into it. I think, feel like I did a good job of making a fleshed out story with characters and plot and everything like that. But the inspiration behind it was simply this organism in the studies I've read. Soulmates.com. This is another experimental story that's basically just an online chat. And that is basically people who work for an online dating company and why things might be the way they are and who's running these companies. And it is based on all of our experience, those of us who are single and have done any online dating. It almost seems like it's rigged. And this story suggests that it definitely is. Sorry to hear that. This character experiences some ear trauma from an exploding car, a tailpipe, on a too old vehicle and it gives him some damage and he starts hearing things that he wouldn't hear otherwise. And it is based on that happening, well, half of that happening to me, walking across a street nearby in this old vehicle that shouldn't have been on the road. It just backfired so loud. It actually gave me uh, nerve damage and I didn't hear any voices or did I? The Dungwitch Horror, a Lovecraftian tale. Yep, not Dunwitch Horror. The Dungwitch Horror, not Lovecraftian. Lovecraftian. Yeah, this is a potty humor story. However, however, I did find a home for this after many rejections that it was just, quote, one long poop joke. It is not. I stand behind the fact that it is not. This is cosmic horror. And I... There is just poop related things involved. And perhaps this is based on a true story. I will not reveal anymore. So as to not gross anyone out. The ceremony. This is the closest to sci-fi and maybe dark fantasy, but more sci-fi than I've written, but it's definitely in the horror realm. I was told this is a story that st sticks out the most, 
but I feel like it has enough common themes uh, that I wanted to include it. This is probably the most recent story I wrote in this compilation. And you tell me if it fits or not, but basically it's about another planet and they have some rituals that will be familiar to us. And there's pressure behind these rituals and this creature, I guess, starts to question whether these rituals are worth completing or not. And yeah, it's based on my experience of not always meeting life's benchmarks when you're supposed to. And I question some things and, and maybe uh, I'm missing something. So that's what the character thinks in, in their mind. And they are an alien species on their native planet. There is no zombie outbreak. This story is experimental in the fact that it's basically done with a kind of Facebook, I call it chat space, where there are Facebook posts and comments and there's articles. So it's experimental layout. I did find a couple homes for this story and it is about people who are witnessing uh, an outbreak of zombies, a zombie apocalypse, but they are totally in denial of it happening. They always have an excuse for, oh, that's something else. No, that's not happening. That's made up. You're distorting that. And it is based on something, a recent event that a lot of people were in denial about. You can probably guess. It is definitely a satirical parody. It's humorous, but I hope also scary and dark because it's kind of true. <laughs> and it may be what would happen. And that seems to be one of the pieces that was left out of a lot of the zombie stories is that how many people would just pretend it's not happening. Second to last penultimate story, which is which? Which. So W-H-I-C-H is W-I-T-C-H. Oh, very clever. Wordplay there. Not really. This is another witch story. It is an old timey. So it's kind of in a colonial time, but I made up the place and the time. It's, it's sort of a fantasy colonial witch hunt. And I've been dabbling a little more in the old timey stuff. And I really tried to experiment with the language, have a timeless language, not doth thee thou, nothing like that, but also not super modernized. And I try to just conjure this place because I'm a word witch. And it is about, like I said, a witch hunt. And it is based on a real life witch hunt is all I'll say. Final story is also not a story. It is a lyric, song lyric called Master the Monster. And it is semi autobiographical. It's a song I wrote about myself, how self-indulgent, right? And it, I hope, encapsulates what I'm trying to bring to you, dark reader, in this horror world. I hope you appreciate the stories where the shadows are shown, September 30th, from Book Purveyors. And I am offering a money-back guarantee, unlike any that you have seen before. Basically, here is my guarantee. If you don't find one story that you get a kick out of and one story that turns you off, I will refund your purchase. So all I'm saying is that out of the, what, 20 stories here, one you'll really like, one you'll really dislike. If that doesn't happen, let me know. I will refund your purchase. That's all I got. Buy the book. Why not? Get the ebook, get the paperback. That's how this stuff works. Check it out. I've been writing a lot more short stories. I am going to come out with an eco horror short story collection probably next year sometime, maybe, depending on the reception of this one. And that's what I got. Go to joshesworstnightmare.com to sign up for the newsletter. Stay in touch. Check out social media stuff. I don't do a lot on it anymore just because I found I would rather be writing than spending time doing social media. But I will do stuff 
like this if you find it useful or appealing or you just want to watch it and get angry and make angry comments please do that helps the algorithm thanks goodbye yours darkly josh schlossberg